So Solar 101, how does solar energy technology work? So basically, uh, there are two main parts of a solar system. The solar panels themselves, which is that they are absorbing electricity, they're absorbing energy in, from the sun and converting it into electricity. That's the panels themselves. And then there is the inverters, which are right, as you can see, this is the image of the inverters, which com converts that direct current electricity into alternative current. And then that alternative current goes back to the grid and from the grid, it then it's being that electricity is being credited back to your account in the form of credits, and that's how you're offsetting the solar energy. So that's uh, that's the ba that's the basics of solar. Two main parts, and that conversion of energy from the sun through the inverters going to the grid. So this uh, uh, some information about solar panels themselves. Solar panels themselves, they have a 25-year uh, warranty. And, and basically what I do want to uh, say is that they tend to outlive this warranty life. So after the warranty, panels will still be functioning at year 35, 45. I've seen panels that are still operating at year 50 of their lifespan. So anything beyond 25 years is only a gain for whoever decided to go solar. So 25 years is what the manufacturing company will give you in warranty for those panels. Solar panels are very low maintenance. Once installed on top of your roof, you have to do very little uh, to them. You can just, you know, visit, you can go to the site of the installation once or twice a year. We do recommend that to make sure that they are producing the electricity that it was set and intended to be producing. But otherwise, they take care of themselves really easily. When it snows, they tend to, the snow tends to melt quickly because as soon as the snow hits the panels because of their dark uh, feature, it melts really quickly. So they are cleaning for themselves. Um, they do require direct sunlight. So we, re, uh, we recommend that little to no shading uh, is there when you install a solar system because you wanna produce as much electricity from that panel. And in New York City, it, they are grid connected, which means that you will install a system that will send the electricity back to the Con Edison uh, grid line. And then you will be credited back that electricity towards your bill. So during the summer times, you're gonna be producing an excess amount of electricity that will then be credited during the winter time when you are producing less because the daylights are uh, is shorter. There are three types of solar installations that make sense in New York City. The first one is uh, known as the ballasted array. These ones are very low profile installation. They work really well for large roof where you can uh, install them. As you can see, the ballasted installation has some inter-row spacing in between the panels. So that's why they work for large roof uh, well. And they don't require any roof uh, penetrations or perforations. They're just held down with cinder blocks, which keep the panels, uh, you know, really uh, tight in the roof in the roof space. And they and then they're just producing electricity. Really good if you just want to move the panels later on to do roof work. That one is a very quick uh, way of you know having an installation that does not require any mechanical integration into your roof. They tend to be cheaper and easier to install. And when I say cheaper, is because the the um, you don't have to have a structure be mounted on them. When they are large enough that the solar costs tend to be very, very low with ballasted installations. The second type of installation is a mechanically integrated uh, system, which means it is a planar array. As you can see, there is a structure. This one is better when you, when you have small to medium sized roof because you have to maximize the, uh, the production of the system. In this case, you don't have inter row spacing, so you can place much more panels in one space uh, that is like uh, constrained in some ways. And you can have more solar production if you were to put a mechanically integrated system or a planar array because you have more panels that are closer to each other. And then the third one is another form of mechanically integrated system. These are known canopy arrays. They're very famous throughout the city as well. These ones tend to elevate themselves nine feet, uh, nine feet high above the roof. So you can use them as a shelter space. They, they can cover the entire uh, roof and then uh, they do tend to be a little bit more expensive because of, it does require uh, some mechanical structures that are uh, not as easy to build. So, you know, more, more equipment goes into them. But otherwise, if you want to maximize production, a canopy system works really well. If you do one to maximize production, one, and then two, if you want to use the roof space underneath. And they're also good if you want to make sure that you're doing roof work, a canopy system will allow you to do that underneath uh, the system itself. So this is a solar viability quiz. And if anyone would like to participate, I'll ask you to unmute yourself uh, or just jump in. Uh, and I'm just gonna be pointing out, uh, based on what I have shared about solar, 
what do you think of whether these buildings are good or not for solar? So this is our first option. And can anyone uh, tell me whether this system, uh, could we build a solar system on building A? Okay, so I guess uh, we have a very quiet crowd today. Okay, Jacqueline, go ahead. I would say probably not because of the shade from the other building. That's exactly correct. So yes, building A, it's very hard to build a solar system because there is a, a, bu a building next to it that has creating, is creating a lot of shade. What about building B? Yes, because there's no shade blocking the building. Okay, uh, thanks so much. Uh, so building B, uh, it would be a little bit difficult to build solar too because there is like little space. You could do little several canopy systems, but yes, technically you could put a very small system, but it would be very expensive in New York City. But technically, yes, uh, still it would be very hard. What about building C though? Seems good. It seems that looks like fine because, um, it seems good. It seems like yep. Yeah, I got two responses from Carrie and then another person. Uh, yes. So yes, uh, building C is perfect for solar. But I want to show you guys how creative solar can be in the city. And there are many other systems, as you can see here, a very small system and still solar still was possible for that building. A very small system and solar was possible. These are mechanically integrated systems, as you can see or uh, uh, planar arrays. And I think this one is a canopy system above this roof. So solar is possible uh, even in space constraint roofs. And in this one, is as I said, in building B, you could, um, but it will be very small or you have to do a series of small canopies around, but it will be more expensive. All right, so how does solar energy uh, work? How does the credit distribution work in the city? Well, as we know, in New York City, we have to share a roof with many, many families. So there, a building has one roof for sometimes 100 families. And how we do it, how, how the credit distribution works is that once you install a system on, on top of one building, you can first look at how to offset the electricity for the common area usage. So can that solar system be large enough to offset the energy production, the energy usage for that common area of that building? So that includes the laundry room, the elevators, the lighting in the hallways, et cetera. So if that's the case, then you will be able to save as a resident of your building, the common area costs for electricity. And then you can use that, that money or that savings for windows repairs or maintenance that otherwise you know, needed to be taken care of but now that you're saving in electricity costs. Or you cannot increase your, your shareholders uh, uh, regular maintenance fees because now you're saving from having installed solar. The second option is that if you build a system that is very large or large enough, if your roof is, is big, then you may be able to offset a portion of the shareholders' individual electricity bill too. And that's called community shared solar, where you can offset the common area plus a small portion of each of the, build, of the individual units electricity bill. You wouldn't offset the whole to total of each of the units, but it's some, somewhere around uh, $200 and, um, $250 per unit. And that's like, in my case, for example, just speaking for my own experience, it would be about three to five months in my, for my, of my own bill. So it could be a good savings for a family that is you know, using that amount of solar or two months if you're using 100 every month. So now with that, do you guys have any questions on solar energy technology? Folks are welcome to just unmute themselves. In the chat. Yeah, Folks are welcome it. to just unmute themselves. Yeah, go for it. Um, so um, my yeah. board has been talking about the weights. They've looked into it a bit and they, they were talking about the weight of the arrays. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if that's a valid concern mm -hmm. and if there is the weight issue, what can they do to overcome that? 
Yeah, thank you so much, BJ. And it's a, it's a valid concern and it's a wonderful question. Um, so, and it's a great question, very, very great question. Um, so buildings in New York City, according to the Department of Building, you are required to have a roof that will sustain at least 30 pounds per square foot. The solar panel system will only uh, weigh 10 pounds per square foot. So you still have 20 pounds to, uh, to work with afterwards. So you wouldn't, there wouldn't be a problem about installing a solar energy system on top of your roof because the weight concern will be already taken care of based on the regulation and stipulations uh, set forth by the Department of Building. So is that true? I have a follow-up. Is that true even for older buildings? Because this is a, a very old building. Actually, and I, yeah. I actually wonder if they even actually, know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah great question too. Older buildings are, so the 30 minimum is, uh, is a new policy. Older buildings actually can sustain even more weight. When they were built and designed, older buildings have more uh, weight capacity than newer buildings. Except that, of course, you have to be doing roof maintenance every 20 years, 25 years. So that's another thing. Solar works best with new roofs. So if you have a roof that is like 15 years old or 20 years old, we would suggest that you would consider either working on that roof before you go ahead and put an installation unless it's a canopy system. Uh, because, you know, there may be there at some point you will have to replace the roof and you don't want to install something and then have to take it out in order to work on the roof later on. So, but yeah, older buildings can sustain more weight technically than newer buildings. Any other question? I hope that I answered your question, BJ. Yes, you did, thanks. Okay. Uh, not many questions on solar this time around. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat or just unmute yourself at any point in this presentation and we'll be happy to address them uh, for you.